My name's Laura. Uh, thank you so much for coming out tonight. I'm like really, really excited to talk about this. I've been kind of eyeballs deep in learning Gutenberg because Gutenberg is JavaScript. And a lot of us, I don't know, um, can't speak for everybody, but many people that have been WordPress developers and kind of made their livelihood developing WordPress themes, we deal with a lot of PHP, a lot of HTML, a lot of CSS, and sometimes some JavaScript. Um, Gutenberg's like 100% JavaScript. And so there's a huge learning curve for getting started. And Gutenberg's in React, it uses ES6. Um, all the new things that you could possibly be confusing have, are layered into Gutenberg. And right now, the project and the developer experience and the API are such that they're being developed and it hasn't really had time at all to like get that backing of resources and those uh, tutorials and learning items. So that's gonna, something that's gonna be developing over the next few months. But okay, so I have a little, uh, basically not quite nice slides like uh, Greg's, but a text file of notes for myself as I go through this. So um, once again, I'm like just, I'm learning this myself and kind of we're all in this same boat of really figuring things out. Um, everything's centered around the GitHub repo for Gutenberg. And I highly recommend just kind of starring it or following it, checking in, and keeping a quick, you know, just really to keep up to date on what's happening. A lot of times there will be issues that are relevant to everybody, not just developers too. So everything, everything happens on here. And then there's also, the uh, Gutenberg handbook on wordpress.org, which is the, the documentation. There's a lot of gaps to be filled in, but that is a point of reference for developers. So most of the API methods are documented here. And there is a, um, this is a really good tab read, the language of Gutenberg that kind of talks about some of the development philosophy behind the software, which I'm gonna go over as well. Um, okay, so the biggest thing and the biggest challenge as from a developer standpoint is that blocks do not equal fields. So we have been, so previously the like WordPress development and like theme development workflow was kind of like, okay, you create a field, you add something to the WordPress admin, and then you put it in a template. And there was this disconnect between like the data structure and the actual markup. And now all of that's kind of enmeshed in these React components and in all of this JavaScript. So, um, like Greg was introducing, the idea of these HTML comments are what separate this content out. So everything in Gutenberg, so a block, um, is all stored in the post content table. And the thing that distinguishes blocks are these HTML comments, which is actually a really elegant way of making Gutenberg compatible, like backwards compatible. And if, for example, you have a block that um, let's say you have a custom block, but you don't, for some reason, that block's component wasn't loading, it still has the HTML that's preserved in a very pure form. So, um, and sometimes there can be data that's passed along with these blocks. Um, but in general, you'll see something like this in your database. So if I look at um, just an example of a, like, test Gutenberg post here, um, you can see I have this, like, this is a core paragraph, and the content in there is really great stuff, of course. Um, and then a gallery, and this is my markup in the gallery. So for some reason, this gallery block, the JavaScript for it was broken, it can default to just showing me that HTML, which is like a fantastic way to kind of mitigate the risks in um, an environment that's so intertwined like this with lots of dependencies. <clears throat> so, um, so the way Gutenberg works, so if we take a look at a Gutenberg post here. Um, so this is just a pretty basic page created in Gutenberg. I have my title block, um, this is a paragraph, and kind of like Greg was talking about, the UI is a little hidden. There are certain things where it's like, oh, how would I even know to click there? And so I think a lot of the usability aspects of Gutenberg are gonna be learned, um, which is, you know, a valid method of doing things. But, <clears throat> so there's gonna be different settings. So I can edit anything as HTML like this, and you can convert it back to edit visually, um, things like that. And you can move blocks around. If I want to add a new block, there's usually some arrow in here. Um, and a look at what plugins are going to be doing. So Caldero Forms is a form plugin that previously you would um, embed in a post via a short code. So you could add a short code block like that, and I can paste in my form there. But Caldero Forms has prepared for Gutenberg already, 
and I can add in a block like so. So I choose my form. Obviously, this is not quite prime time yet, some styling issues. But the plugin knows to kind of make that request for the form markup to then put into a block. Okay, and now a custom block. So if someone was asking about con uh, columns, so currently the blocks baked into Gutenberg um, are pretty rudimentary. So we don't have any super supercharged layout blocks and things like that. Um, there is a this text columns block, so to speak. Um, so something I wanted for this site in particular was a. Let me open up my design thing here. Um, and I would encourage anybody, like, as you're designing, to think in terms of like what's going to be a custom block. So think about the blocks that you get for free with Gutenberg, and then think about what you need to build yourself. So this, for example, this is just kind of rough designs, but for a nonprofit's website, I wanted to make some kind of block that allowed me to have an image on the left, and then a headline, a paragraph, and a call to action button. And so that was kind of my goal in building this block, and basically learning React for the first time as well, so it's slow going. Um, <clears throat> but there's starting to be some good tools out there. So my block exists in plugins. So blocks are always going to be plugins now. Um, so I created a little thing called call out, a content call out block. So I'm calling that little node of content a content call out. And if I activate this, I can then Go back to my pages. So and then I can start typing in, and so I have this content call out. And this is a little bit ugly, because I haven't gotten all the stylings in. But I have my image upload on the left, and I can use that just kind of like normal. Um, and then I can type in something here, update. Um, and the way these blocks are structured, like you can tell there's some styling here. I've opted to put this red border around here. Obviously, this is pretty rough right now. But the way this works is it gives us a lot of opportunity to style the admin more specifically for users. And ultimately, I think this is going to kind of merge the front end and back end. So we will have a true front end editing experience rather than um, like. I think these page builders have options for like load the front end editor and then everything like crashes usually because it's so like resource intensive. Um, but Gutenberg, I think, will ultimately move. That's kind of the end goal is to move into this like, oh, I can just click on that and edit it. And in terms of what the code is doing, like that's that's how you edit something. Um, kind of a high level. But so if I view, I should see my block. My nice headline. So sli styling slightly different, um, but I get the same idea. So it's a little more like whoever's editing can see what they're getting. <clears throat> That's a little custom block for you. <laughs>